Hello again. Sat in the boot of the car. Seem to be doing this quite a lot. Right, do you watch Golf Psychic? Of course you do. Of course you do. And, you know, I've got all, I've got his shirts, I've got his hats. Well, not today. And I've got stickers and badges and goodness knows what else. Golf towels. Um, he could probably get me locked up for stalking him. Now, I've watched all his videos. And I mean all his videos, from the first to the latest. And I watch them over and over again. In fact, sometimes I will, I'll just put it on one morning and I will binge watch 10, 12 or 15 videos in a day because I've got sod all else to do. I usually do it while I'm at work, but don't say that out loud. So I'm working here and I've got the old other screen here. So I'm sort of like watching it with my left ear. But the one video I keep going back to is his sub 80 666 video. Essentially, it's a, it's a guide. He's got a loud exhaust. So basically, it's a guide or a philosophy for breaking 80. And the, the plan is six greens in regulation, six up and downs, and six birthday holes. Now, birthday holes can be bogeys or even double bogeys. Because if you're shooting 81 to 84, and you, you've had a few in the 70s, but you want to get there more regular, you are making birdies. So when you make your birdie, it turns a double bogey into a single bogey. And the whole plan of this video is to get you round the golf course, get you thinking without thinking about the score, and removing the pressure of the score. Now this place is a par 69, so I suppose my 7 over par is 76. But the standard scratch is 71. You're not expected to finish your round of golf with a net 69, you're expected to finish your round of golf with a net 71. So 7 on 71 is 78. So I'm going to go out and try and do that, and try and follow the philosophy. Now I know you're going to say, well, hang on Simon, you're a five handicap, of course you're going to do it. But as you know, nothing is guaranteed in this world, especially your golf score. Well, you've seen some of the crock that I've played and some of the good that I've played, granted. But let's think about the philosophy. And I can talk about the philosophy while shooting 82. I can talk about the philosophy while shooting 72. So. This is going to be a voiceover, um, cut the chat out on the course, and then I can keep moving, especially as it's, I'm teeing off at 10 past 4 on September the 11th, and it's going to be dark at the end. So uh, I need to stride out rather than yak. So let's go to the tee and see if I can actually do it. But we'll, we'll leave the other guy to talk you through it. One of the key teachings is to only hit shots you know you can play with clubs you know you can play. So a fade with the driver here is favourite and I do wonder why I've spent so much time with the three wood. The ball's below my feet, the green slope's left to right. So I'm aiming left and just allowing the ground to do its job. And it does. First putt of the day, you don't know quite how fast it's going to be. So if you're playing with other people, you always watch them to see what happens. And uh, with no one to watch, I wasn't sure of the pace. Now the back of the hole is a lot softer than a metal flag stick. So most of the time you'll see me take it out. And I would heartily recommend you do the same, because the hole looks an awful lot bigger. One of the hard parts of playing golf is hitting a good shot and still not getting a result out of it. 
That's as good a three wood as I've ever hit. And I'm in the fairway. But I have no shot with my nine iron. So you've got to figure out the easiest way of making your par. And I've under hit it. And then that's another under hit. So I could throw my pitching wedge up into the tree or I can get on with it. And we are permitted six birthday holes. And that's only just a birthday hole. This golf course is tough. I've hit a four iron down the flag and it's bounced right. And it's very hard to take that on the chin. So it's bounced right, I'm in the bunker. Not a lot of sand because it's the end of the season and it's another birthday hole. That's two over after three. Now we can start losing the plot here or we can accept that all we've done is use two of our birthday holes. One of the keys is where you aim. So I know I cannot miss this green to the right. So I'm always going to favour the left side. And this tumbles off the left side. So it's perfect. I've made the correct mistake. And that is so important to do. Now I've been up on the green and I've had a look. That chip was deliberately onto the downslope to get it to go forwards. And that's my first up and down. Now we've had a lot of rain, so I think there's enough room here for me driver. Well, I was right by seven feet, but I'm on a little downslope, so the target is no longer the flag. The target is now the middle of the green. So we shift our target according to what we think we can do with the golf ball. If I'd taken on the flag and squirted it right, I would not be making a par. That's a perfect drive up the left, my preferred side of this fairway. In fact, I'm even left of the tree. But this gives me a straight shot down the hole. 
Well, that's just a little tug and it clips up tree and it brings it down short. I want uphill. So again, this pitch is going to be short and deliberately so. Although perhaps a little closer than this, but you know, I'm still practicing my pitching. Walking off with a par is uh, very nice indeed. Second shot on nine has always got to go left. The wind's a little off the left. The ground slopes left to right and the green slopes left to right. And I'm very, very happy to hit this green. One of the keys for me playing this game is the old up and down. And it's not really that difficult if you put the practice in. No, 11, I do not care where this flag is. My target on the vast majority of short holes that I play is the exact center of the green. then I can afford to pull it a bit or push it a bit or hit it a little fat or hit it a little thin the center of the green is my target and I'll put from there every single time This is possibly one of the strangest holes I play. Because no matter how well you hit your tee shot, you're left with the same second shot, just from a slightly different position. And boy, this is a toughie. That's short, so it's probably going to be another birthday hole. But we're allowed to have birthday holes in this process of 666. It doesn't matter. And that's a prime example of over borrowing and the ball stops by the hole. Tappings are great. This is hard into the wind. I could change my game plan and go with driver here. But it's not a driver hole, not really. Not unless you're very good. So stick with your game plan, even though it means you might have one more club into the green because of the wind. Now I've long since realized that on this hole, all I've got to do is get over the hill. I don't need to hit my driver. 
In fact, the driver's likely to get me in more trouble. Ball way above the feet. So you have to allow for this. Left is dead. Right is good. And if you're a little bit too far right, it comes down the bank. So you've got a really good insurance policy on that bank that you see behind me now. So use it. Okay. This is another case of aiming in the right direction. Left is dead. The ball's above your feet. It's likely to draw. So aim to the right. But on this green, getting up there in two is only half the battle. So look at that. If there's one thing that golf has taught me is that you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen next. For the record, this round of golf is brought to you by the Inesis Tour 900. You know, that crap ball that goes 33 yards less than a Pro V1, allegedly. Yeah, I don't have to watch that. <laughs> 